All right, George, we got a total virgin right here, 18,000 miles. Z6Z06 Bad Mama Jam. So guys, right about now, this thing makes about 450 wheel horsepower, and we're going to do a full-blown package throwing everything at it. Uh, it's gonna get heads, cam, intake, uh, everything that we can throw at this thing in order to make as much power as we can. So we're shooting for a little over 600 wheel horsepower. I think that it's very possible. 625 and for naturally aspirated horsepower at a 427 cubic inch engine to run on pump gas. It's gonna feel like 3000. I don't know if I'd go that high. That's, a, that's a little bit of a stretch, but Steve, it's well, gonna feel good. Good car. What, what do you say? On the E85, I heard pump gas. We are, yes, we are gonna do uh, E85 as well. well that's on Okay, fair enough. Tampa stock. We're gonna tear this thing down and we're gonna show you all of the parts and why we're selecting the parts that we have in order to make this thing fully optimized. If you guys are ever looking for a high performance car, in my opinion, this is one of the top tier picks. The car is absolutely fantastic. It's still a little rough and raw around the edges and it has that fantastic naturally aspirated feeling. It really, really does feel almost like a positive displacement supercharger when it's all done up. It is such a light vehicle, has so much bottom end torque. They're just so tough to beat. These cars outperform so many other things with so much more power. A car that is about 625 wheel horsepower right here should be able to go high nines at about 140, 142 miles an hour, depending on weather. And you could always add some spray. But these things have a fantastic motor if you guys are not familiar with them. They have a dry sump, they got titanium rods, they got factory CNC ported heads. A lot of unique stuff that was offered in very select cars and some stuff is exclusive to this car. These earlier models only come in six speed manuals. A really good looking car. Good looking car, favorite car. Gotta show off our Motion Raceworks fender covers. They make every job so much nicer and cleaner and safer. Definitely didn't want to damage the paint on this super nice virgin car. George and I are tearing everything off. Pull off our injectors. We're getting ready to replace them with some 850cc injectors, which will really lower our duty cycles on the E85. Cold air intake and the intake manifold are going to be replaced with some LG Motorsports cold air intake as well as an MSD Atomic. All right, guys, you get to take a look at those CNC ported cylinder heads from the factory. And coming up, we got some stuff of George porting these cylinder heads. Now, that is a very interesting undertaking here. So everything here we're going to optimize. This is our factory air filter. This thing is very deep. We're going to change this guy out. We take that mass airflow out, and that goes into new cold air. And for a 427 cubic inch engine, it's got a pretty large intake manifold. When we port these, we normally pick up about 15 wheel horsepower, about 18 pound feet of torque. Really nice manifold, but it can be a lot better. We're actually going with an aftermarket MSD Atomic on that. Spark plugs, these are good for nothing. We're gonna be putting in some NGK BR70Fs that are less likely to spark knock. We can run a little bit more advanced timing on it and thus make it safer for the customer and for the tuner. Well, what we have here is our whole factory setup of what we have removed thus far. Now the heads aren't off yet, but we're gonna get to that. Georgie's working on it. And here we go with all the stuff that we're going to replace here. But first, let's talk about this. Now, you guys might look at this and be like, that is actually a really good, very large flowing exhaust manifold. And you'd be right. It really is the best factory manifold that they have. However, going to the whole LG system, which is what we got right here, so we contacted LG Motorsports and we have done some testing on these headers versus this factory header. Now, a lot of information on the internet is like, oh, I wouldn't put headers on because you're not gonna pick up this much power and blah, blah, blah. Well, I actually did some very in-depth testing of these headers versus the factory manifold. Now, up top, they gain a very decent amount of power. Yeah, I think we picked up about 15 wheel horsepower. However, underneath the curve, we picked up over 45 pound feet of torque. Now, in my book, that is most definitely a win. Not only that, you're actually losing a very substantial weight off the vehicle. I think it's about 25 pounds. Now there have been many times that we have picked up in excess over 30 wheel horsepower and over about 50 pound feet of torque. 
But this whole package all together, along with the cylinder heads and camshaft, knocking on the door of about 620 wheel horsepower. Now, like I said, in factory trim, this thing dynos right about 450. So that's 170 wheel horsepower pickup, naturally aspirated. But taking a look at these LG headers, really, really nice quality. They got, they're welded inside and out and they have a true race merge collector. Now, what's really cool about this header is the fact that it is the exact same header for a street car as what they have on their championship winning race car. And with that merge collector, you see that squeeze down that hourglass right there, that does speed up velocity and it helps draw out the next charge, which is hence why you're picking up so much torque. But everything's all really nice TIG welded and again, welded on the inside and outside so we're not gonna have any leaks in the future. And that is a two inch full length header. Now here's the camshaft that we got and we have our MSD Atomic Air Force intake. Now this intake manifold should pick up a very substantial amount of power over stock as well. We also have our LG cold air intake which is absolutely beautiful now one of the coolest things about this whole lg setup is this is called the man knob so with these cars they have a factory butterfly here that you can open and close on the exhaust well what they decided to do here is they put a little switch on there this goes into the fuse that opens and closes that so if you're out there driving and you want to be able to kind of flex on somebody and maybe peacock a little bit just open that up close it right back down see a cop close it back up Really nice setup, really ergonomical. I'm a peacock, man! You gotta let me fly! Remember that movie? No. Other guys? Yeah. Ben knows. He's peacock the time or two. <laughs> the new guy is Ricky. He's been a big help around the shop here. Turn off the rockers, the cylinder heads, the brackets. And eventually the front cover and the radiator. Put in a cam in the LS, you do have to pull out everything in the front as well as the rack. Not a lot of space up there. The vet is tucked really tight with all the accessories up very close in the front. As the heads are coming off, we got a pretty neat little segment here where we're showing how we dive in pretty deep on some of the porting, really some airflow secrets. Well, fellas, we are at the turning point. We've got everything completely disassembled and we have restarted the re reassembly because we have our stage three cam in there. We got our new lifters and the heads are about to go on. You just saw them before. We've got our ATI balancer on here. So we're trying to get everything out of this thing that we can possibly get naturally aspirated, all that low hanging fruit. Now, when we start to put in the cold air intake here, you might think, where are we getting that cold air from? Well, what we do is we cut this area down in here so that as more airflow comes in, it is going up into where our cold air box is. And we will tackle that in just a little bit once we get everything a little more short up here. Surgical precision with that hammer. That's my lucky hammer, man. Things saved my life. I, I must Don't hear the story. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, we need to hear the story. <laughs> just one time. Not gonna hear the story. Not gonna hear the story. All right, fellas, the most integral part to this whole build here is airflow. I mean, the whole thing that we're doing on this build is optimizing airflow. So we're trying to get air in and air out. And here's the man right here. Main way to do that, cylinder heads. Yep, so if we did everything else, we would certainly improve the overall VE, which is volumetric efficiency. That is how well we fill a cylinder. But really, this is the bottleneck both in and out. So George has some heads that have been ported and some that, and a few ports here that have not been ported on this one. And we wanted to show you guys the difference. So guys, if you really want to dive in deep to some of the porting stuff of what we've done before, George and I have had a porting challenge. We've kind of covered some of the porting process all the way through and just kind of look through that in some of our other videos. Here, we're going to kind of show you what is unique to the LS7 head. And really the closest head to this is the LS3, of which we yeah. did on the, uh, Miata and we picked up 35 wheel horsepower from a port job only. So we are going to increase the compression ratio. There's certainly power that is gained from the compression ratio. However, being able to extend the usable RPM of this head and particularly, you know, what we're doing in the bowl and the intake and opening up the exhaust is what is going to get there for us. So let's take a look at some of this stuff. The let's LS take a look at stock one too. Is already a good stock head. Yeah, it's already it's like CNC, ported. CNC ported stock. That's crazy. It's a better cast, but it's already CNC ported. 
it's big, it flows, and it gets the job done. But we're gonna get the job done a little bit better, yeah. all right? Now it also starts out, this is a bad example because I haven't done it on this head yet, but with a very nice combustion chamber. Again, CNC ported, I mean, it's, it's nice. It's clean, it's smooth. And as you always say, smooth is fast. <laughs> One so thing we're going to... Usually in regards to driving, but... <laughs> yeah, but it's everything, man. So you can see right here, you can see where it's kind of machined and not touched with the CNC. But we're going to open that up, let that air come around that valve. Because, you know, it's only opening, you know, this much, a little bit more. Three-quarter race cam. So the valve is only opening, like, literally something like this much. Yeah, so okay. we're going to be close to about 700 thousands on this cam right here. And that looks pretty darn close right yeah. there. So, I mean, you're trying to get that whole cylinder full out that you got to you gotta smooth it out, man. You need a valve job. You need to squeeze that air out of there. Okay, so the area that is the tightest squeeze is right here. So what we're doing is we're going to open that up just a little bit more right there. It's obvious to see that this is the area that has the tightest squeeze right down here. And then we have the cylinder that is wider than the combustion chamber right there. If we open this up, we can see that there is a portion of this valve that is shrouded. What we're doing is by unshrouding the valve, we are helping pick up exhaust flow. Yeah, and the closer you get to top that center, the closer that valve is gonna be closing. So as much as we can get through there, it is the incredibly integral how you shape that too. For so, sure. all right, so let's take a look at some of the exhaust ports that are done versus stock right now. You can see on our stock exhaust port, how there's a lot of material still on, above the valve guide there, impeding airflow. It's it's slowing it down. And I mean, we're talking about high engine speeds and a lot of airflow. So this is a larger engine than, this is really the, the largest OEM engine that there is. So everything is proportionately larger. And the fact that it's proportionately larger, you have some areas that can become a restriction. And this exhaust port of what George is showing us right now is exactly that. Another way to think of this is kind of funneling air in and funneling air out. Basically, the valve is the throat of everything. That is where everything squeezes down or, and it is the highest velocity point. Short side radius and the back of the valve, that is where air is at the highest point. Now, with a lot of volume of airflow and higher RPMs on this particular cylinder head, we're trying to alleviate any sort of restriction. And with what George has just shown us, you can really feel a difference with your fingers is most likely going to cause some problems as far as airflow. And this right here, it feels completely different than what this does. We are putting the monster clutch in this here C6 Z06. It's S-series twin disc clutch, perfect for street and track use. If you're gonna beat it down on the track, this is the clutch for you. Same thing we got in Uncle Sam, the S10, the Miata. We got this in the monster clutch Miata. Okay, it's like having a stock clutch in there, but at the same time, you get to grip it and you get to rip it without all the slipping. You know what I'm saying? It's better drivability than stock. <laughs> like factory c7 built with the disc inside it you don't ever want to dismantle this it is balanced the way it is machine 
down to a thousandth of an inch. Monster Clutch does not play no games. I mean, look at these, look at these billet parts here, man. So, okay, if you want to bang some gears, all right, if you want to run, run your best time ever, you better go right now to monsterclutch.com, FP10, discount code FP10, get yourself 10% off. I'm a little jelly at the moment there. Wow. You're a little clumsy at the moment. Yeah, always. Sorry. They were taken away on that unit. Look at these, look at the clearance on these babies. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes, you know, let's be honest here. We've seen some big differences amongst cars as far as this hose is right here on this one, and it's a little bit off, and the engine's actually tweaked one way or the other. Sometimes it doesn't always fit. Now, that's not just, that's just cars in general. So that's cars in general, all cars. Yeah, and these are fitting really, really good. Just got to do a little bit of, Dude, Look you at know. how it, like, necks down right here. A little Venturi. It's yeah, like it a carburetor or an airplane wing except for an exhaust except for it's an exhaust <laughs> you, right there you sounded like mater like talking that's... about his girlfriend he's like <laughs> except she was a truck world best backwards drive ow all right keep going oof you got the pinky in there come Her... on man spotlight it's hurting even worse <laughs> <laughs> that's embarrassing rest of exhaust is going to be up in a moment she's looking really good shaping up good progress for today Probably start the rest tomorrow. Yeah, we're almost done with this thing, man. It's going to be a pretty, pretty intense ride right here. One thing's for sure, he's going to need some tires. All said and done, we're actually saving probably about, mm, I would think somewhere about maybe 30 pounds off the car. It's not a lot, but I mean, this car only weighs about 3150 to begin with. So, eh, knocking on the door of that 3120 mark. That's yeah. Fine. All right, buddy. Ding. So this is not power related, but it is still porting. It's efficient. We make so much heat, we need to get some of that out of there. Ain't that right, Jeremy? Yeah. So tell them what we do. Okay, so this is basically part of what we're doing on our clutch mod. So with our monster clutch, uh, that is a major step up to begin with. However, every clutch still does yield a bit of dust. That being said, well, and heat for that matter. So we've opened up the front side of the bell housing on both sides. There was a plastic panel right there, but opening up the back side as well allows that to expel it. I mean, if you think about it, the front side being closed and the back side only being open, you still don't have a traversal of airflow. We want to be able to get that out of there, get the heat out as well as the dust. So the dust builds up and that can kind of create like a kind of like you skimming across the floor and not getting that true grip of what is there. If you can keep it clean, the fluid will be clean and thus you should have better longevity. But there's a lot more to that and we have mentioned that before in some other of these builds, but I wrote a thread a long time ago called How to Prolong the Life of Your Clutch. That works for many applications out there. Well, it looks like your exhaust is totally complete this is all painted up, looks really, really good on there. George just got done tacking everything up. It's nice to do that because all these different pieces, they tend to move, grow, expand, with the car tweaking, heating up, and so on and so forth. But really, this LG Motorsports kit came out so incredibly nice. Would you say it came out super clean? You see what I did there? Is that a subliminal message or something? <laughs> Look how clean it is though, dude. Look how nice everything fits. Nice and beautiful and pretty. Not gonna melt any lines. This one's a little close. I'm gonna work on that, but I think when I pull the cradle up, it's gonna boop, boop. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. All right, brother. Looks really good. I can't wait to hear this thing. We we're probably oh, just a sound. short little amount of time away from firing up too, right? Yeah, dude. All right, cool. Can't we'll wait to hear it. A little bit of that and we'll be. I mean, potato, 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 potato. Yes, it's much more of a potato. I don't know what the heck that engine was right there. That was probably a block or something. I get carried away. Mm. I'm so glad you guys find this interesting. This has been a fun build for us. Uh, next video will conclude this build. This thing is an absolute ripper. I just got to finish it up and it is awesome. I wanted to thank LG Motorsports. Now, these guys have everything from C5 all the way through C8. They got parts suspension components, power packages. They've got a number of different things. Anything that you really want to be able to do to your vet, they got that covered. They got coilovers, they got anything from streetcar to race car stuff. They even cover a number of other manufacturers like the new Toyota Supra. And they also have a lot of carbon fiber parts they produce as well.
Now, both LG Motorsports and Monster Clutches have gotten together in order to offer you guys a promo code, and that is 10% off. So if you use FP10, Monster Clutches, and LG Motorsports, you can get 10% off of all products using FP10. So that benefits you guys for watching us do what we do. So, so thank you guys so very much for that, and hopefully you guys can reap the benefit of watching us. i got a quote I wanted to leave you guys with. You do what's possible, leave the impossible to God. In other words, he'll send the fish, but you got to go do the fishing. The song I wanted to leave you guys with is by Barnes Courtney. It's called Glitter and Gold. Hope you guys enjoy. God bless you. We'll see you next episode.